I think the most interesting thing about the ship is the history of the people who built her and sailed in her. Certainly the story of the Kaiser shipyards in World War II, then the diverse types of people who worked here, uh, all races, uh, men and women working alongside one another, just to create this ship and the other 746 ships that were built in this shipyard. In 1940, Henry Kaiser landed a contract to build 30 ocean-class cargo ships for Great Britain. And in 1940 is significant because it's before the United States was involved in World War II. In 1941, President Franklin Roosevelt signed executive order to ban discrimination in wartime employment. And it didn't take a great recruiting effort to convince people to come out here and, uh, and take jobs in the shipyards. There were 90,000 shipyard workers from all over the country who had been recruited from the Deep South and uh, Dust Bowl states of America. This was a sleepy little town of 23,000 people. And all of a sudden, in, in a very short period of time, just a couple of years, 93,000 people came here to work in the shipyard. So everything was stretched to the limit. The influx of so many people all at once had a tremendous impact on the socioeconomic and culture of Richmond. The city infrastructure was not, not prepared at all for so many people all at once. Temporary housing had to be built in many cases. And the racial makeup of the shipyards and of the city changed dramatically. Henry Kaiser was an entrepreneur, to use a 21st century term. Kaiser was also innovative in the technology, first of all, for building these ships. Kaiser was building these ships on average in about 90 days. And STEM or science, technology, engineering, and math, that term didn't exist, of course, in the 1940s, but the concept certainly existed. People who were what were called the ship fitters, these are the people who actually put the plates together that made the ship an intact piece that could, could uh, function at sea. Those people certainly had to have some uh, tremendous engineering skills and abilities. But in fact, most of the people though that came to the shipyards, they didn't have those skills to begin with. And so training was provided. The Kaiser was also very innovative in terms of employee relations and he wanted happy employees, he wanted healthy employees, he wanted people who came to work and worked hard every day. And how do you do that? Well, you make sure they have housing. And there was a housing department here at the shipyards. You make sure they have transportation. They built a shipyard railway so that people would have a dedicated railway that brought them to the shipyards. Henry J. Kaiser was unique in that he was the first employer to create a job-centered daycare for the kids of the women who were working in the shipyards. And for those who have children and are used to paying for daycare, it was a dollar a day in 1944. So it was, uh, it, that was a, a significant innovation at the time. And schools like Nystrom Elementary was, was built very quickly and they had so many students, they had to do uh, school in shifts. Some kids would, would do to sc have school in the beginning of the day, and then another set of kids would, would have school at the end of the day. One of the interesting things about Henry J. Kaiser was that he was a true visionary when it came to employer-sponsored health plans. It was the first such essentially free health care that was offered to workers anywhere. They, they deducted 10 cents a week to pay for their health plans. And the hospital that he opened on Cutting Boulevard was one of the first employer-based uh, hospitals. And that was the beginning of, of the Kaiser Hospital System that we enjoy today. In 1996, they recognized that the Red Oak Victory was the last ship built here in the Richmond Kaiser shipyards. And so it was decided to 
save the ship and turn it into a museum ship and transferring the ownership of the vessel to the Richmond Museum Association and then moved to the current location which is near the General Warehouse building in, in Shipyard Number 3.